Hi guys, my physicist's name is Willibrord Snell, or as he called himself in his Latin publications, Willibrordus Snellius. Anyway, Snell was born in 1580 in the Netherlands. He was born in the red region on the left side of the map located here, labeled South Holland. He was born in a small town known as Leiden, and he, ser he later taught there as professor of mathematics at the University of Leiden. He also taught astronomy and optics at the university. He married in 1608 and had 18 children, three of whom survived. He died on October 30th, 1626, but not before making major contributions to science. In the field of surveying, he offered a new method for triangulation, which is a technique used to determine one position based on three already known points. This was extremely important in the 16th and 17th centuries, given the fact that world exploration was a major enterprise. Snellius played a major role in promoting this business by making it a lot easier to navigate the seas. His new method revolutionized the way that mariners traveled. In addition, he established the principles of spherical trigonometry. Basically, spherical trigonometry is a field of math in which triangles on the surface of a sphere are calculated and manipulated to tell various pieces of information about the surface. This field of math has many applications in navigation and also map making because it made it much more precise, which ultimately once again promoted world exploration as it allowed people to navigate more freely. In addition, Snell made major contributions to the field of optics. Snell's law which was originally discovered by Ibn Sal in the year 964, was a principle that governs angles of refraction between mediums. Now, what does this mean? Basically, as light passes through different mediums, or a substance in which something travels through, it moves at both a different speed and at a different angle as a result. In the diagram pictured here, the incident ray, or the first light ray, moves through the water at a specific angle, theta sub 1. As it reaches the air, it bends, or refracts, and moves at a different angle through the air. This principle of bending and changing according to the medium is known as a refractive index, and each substance has its own index. Based on these, Snell realized that there was a uniform ratio that would be able to successfully determine how light was going to bend as it passed through different mediums. Snell's law was a critical discovery, serving as the foundation of much future work in the field of optics. Now, of course, Snell made other contributions to mathematics as well. For instance, he created a simple method for tracking comets. It was based off his method for triangulation, and ultimately made it much easier to determine the distance and direction that a comet had traveled. Also. Snell came up with a new method for calculating pi. It made it a lot easier than previous methods. Of course, at this time in the 16th and 17th centuries when Snell lived, it was still a very rough practice and could not compare with the technology that we have today. As you can see, Willibrordus Snellius was clearly a diversely mathematical individual with numerous accomplishments to his name. He even had a crater on the moon named after him. So just remember, the next time that you use your GPS or you see light refracting through water, remember that Snellius was the one who figured out how that worked and that without him, none of it would be possible. Of course, the light would still pass through the water, but you wouldn't be able to figure out the angle if it weren't for him. Anyway, thanks for watching.